Today on Earth Focus, the Colorado River is the lifeline of the American West, but water demand may soon outstrip supply. Jamie Redford and Mark DeSena's new film, Watershed, looks at the urgency of the problem and what people are doing about it. Coming up on Earth Focus. It is said that nothing defines a region more than a body of water. This is particularly true in the American West. The Colorado River and the tributaries that make up her basin shape the spirit of her settlers. El Rio, Colorado, the river colored red from the land she flows through, made this dry land not only livable, but irresistible to settle. Even still, her famed early explorer, John Wesley Powell, warned that combining arid land and civilization would eventually lead to a crisis. The relentless march towards progress led to the 1922 Colorado River Compact and other agreements among seven American and two Mexican states to divvy up the water. They transformed one of the world's wildest rivers, capable of creating grand canyons and inland seas, into the most dammed, dibbed, and diverted river basin in the world. A machine supporting the needs of 30 million people agriculture, industry, urban growth, mining, energy production claw for their share. So much so that the mighty Colorado River of today rarely, if ever, reaches her delta in the Gulf of California. With populations in the region expected to reach 50 million by 2050, temperatures rising and precipitation patterns becoming more erratic, Demand will outpace supply unless we embrace a new water ethic. One that questions not only how we use water, but how it affects the world around us. Watershed is a film that is really exploring a region of the southwest of America, the Colorado River Plateau. And it's looking at everything that relies on the flow of that river. Everything from urban water use to farming, to energy sources, to recreation. And what we do know is that there is an approaching shortage coming. This film is really sort of, I would say it's the opening salvo on creating a greater awareness of this approaching shortage. And most importantly, demonstrating that there are some hopeful solutions. I had the good fortune of going down the Colorado River in 2008. This is before I knew anything about the project. And I noticed on the river, Every night you had to pull your boats up and tie them really tight. And I said, why do we have to do that? You know, the river, just the river, why, why does it change at night? And I came to realize that Las Vegas, the lights come on, they release more water throughout the river. So I got a sense that, wait a second, so this is a, this is a man-made machine, this incredible canyon that we're in. And then I think I realized shortly after that that the water in the river does not reach its end. And that was, there was a certain amount of outrage about that. The mighty Colorado River does not reach its end. It was a story that I needed to tell. To prevent disputes over water rights, the 1922 Colorado River Compact divvied up the river. The problem was allocations were based on an unusually wet period. Average river flows were much less than assumed. So the compact promised more water than the river could deliver. Due to climate change, the Bureau of Reclamation projects even greater shortages by 2050. With that, the likelihood of even greater disputes. Originally, there were boats, big boats, coming up to Juma from the Gulf. There were a lot of cottonwoods and willows, wildlife like dolphins, turtles, jaguar. And there were so many birds that they were like clouds in the sky. The magnificence of the delta when it had all this water. I cannot imagine how that would have looked. It's very big. 
in the 60s, the dams were built in the U.S. So there was water here until the first dam was built. And then they built the other dams and at the end the Delta stopped receiving water as, as usual. I believe that we are in a period of climate change. Um, other people say we're just in a sustained period of aridity, but one thing we do know is there is not as much water in the southwest right now as there has been historically. And you can hear that from the scientists, and you can also hear it from Navajo elders who tell stories that are passed down generation to generation. And you put that on top of the increased impact of population, then it's a double whammy. 30, 40 years from now, I think it could be bleak. I mean, there are things that could be done. The characters in the film do show us positive examples. I mean, I, I laughed with Jamie and the other producers of the show because they, they said, we want you to do a film on water, but we want it to be a positive film. And I first signed up for that. I was like, sure, no problem. And, and I realized how difficult that is. You know, we're not out to... Um to a, sort of alarm or criticize. I think we're in a period right now where there's been a lot of that. And I think there is room for that and, and it's necessary. But this particular film is more interested in demonstrating um, inspiration and solutions. Navajos believe all things are connected. In this human experience, isn't it worth imagining that we are actually in harmony with all the creatures, that we are actually all one thing, that we're not just here to have dominion over everything, and that's all here to serve us. This whole notion of the American dream, there really isn't water conservation or you know any type of environmental anything. If we have the ability to influence it all, our future in regards to the climate, then we need to be taking those steps and ensuring that we're doing the proper thing. You know, I'm not sure to what degree uh, we're causing this climate change or anything. It's obviously happening. It's our responsibility to leave this stuff to future generations. I don't think the legacy we want to leave is a planet that is so far gone that uh, it can't be uh, recaptured at that time. This land ultimately belongs to to the earth. I think we're just we're caretakers. Three years ago we had a conference at the Sundance Resort around the issue of the Colorado River Plateau and the approaching shortage. And we had a huge round table conference for two days in which we brought in all the stakeholders everyone from energy and agriculture, farmers, urban use planning, to sit and talk about what the issues were around that table. And it was a unanimous feeling with the group that the, the, the first thing that had, that had to happen was there needed to be a basic awareness about the issue. You can't really change things if people aren't aware of what the issue is. So we emerged from that with this notion of creating a film that would do that. So the film, in a sense, is a tool. It's just not, we're not going to be able to live the way we did in the 20th century in the West. It's, it's simple. I mean, you know, and there's no reason to consider that alarmist or negative. It, it's a reality, and you can approach it with creativity, like these folks have. I guess the way James Ranch considers our water consumption is to improve upon the resource that's delivered to us. After it flows through the systems of ponds and, and irrigation ditches and uh, out into the fields and the filtration that happens there, when it goes back into the river, it's just like soup. So we create the life by meandering the water down through our ponds and down through this ground that hadn't been fertilized in 16 years. And we grow all these bugs that cause the fish to do well. It's so full of life, and there's water cress in the, in the waterways, and, and uh, bugs, and fish, and uh, it's just it's gorgeous. One of the questions that's uh, often asked me is, 
what caused us to start moving the cows on a regular basis. Our whole deal is just to copy nature. We never regraze in less than 30 days. A grass plant wants to have an equilibrium between what's above the ground and what's below the ground. And so it needs that rest to grow that above ground mass so that the underground mass is growing a lot of roots so that when those cows come in and they eat that top part of the grass off, the shedding of those roots builds topsoil. We're balancing that. We're also balancing it with when this pasture needs to be watered. You know, all the water that goes on to this field is filtered through beautiful ground, you know, the way nature intended it. Healthy grass, healthy soil, healthy water. So we're grass farmers and we're soil builders. Overall goal of the film is to get connect the river to the sea again. The greatest river in the West doesn't reach its end right now. I personally am going to feel much better knowing that that river does reach the sea. John Wesley Powell, the first explorer of the Colorado River Basin, was convinced of one thing that the growth of civilization be contingent on the size and health of its watersheds. With the Colorado River no longer reaching her delta and greater demand looming, perhaps Powell was right. By reshaping the historical compacts that burden us, we can explore new frontiers of cooperation, conservation, and reuse. We can change how we produce food, create energy, and grow our cities to restore a mighty river's connection to the sea. All the while renewing our appreciation for a resource we have most certainly taken for granted. Airwaves, a global channel of uncompromising stories. World news, documentaries, entertainment, and culture. Link TV, connecting you to the world. For more information, visit linktv.org.